Have you ever wanted to design your own in-home movie theater? Whether you want to emulate the style of the Warner Theater here in Richmond, New Jersey, or recreate the interiors of your own intimate neighborhood movie house, what I have for you today might be just a one-of-a-kind book to take some inspiration from. As to cut and wise, it's on this edition of the Zip Store One Down, bringing Hollywood home on a budget next. And that would be Great Escapes. New designs for home theaters. Welcome! A home theater is supposed to be a comfortable, relaxed environment that offers a cinematically resplendent movie viewing experience, easily on a par with traditional neighborhood movie houses of yesteryear. None of that cineplex or multiplex nonsense we've grown accustomed to over the past few years, even though there's nothing wrong with that. If you want some inspiration for your own home theater, this might be a great stepping stone. Purchase for $12.99 and for 50% off the price. Once again, this is Great Escapes. New designs for home theaters by the man highly regarded as the father of home theaters, Greek native Theo Kalabiwakis. The author is Stephen Castle and has plenty of photography by Philip Ennis. Theo Kalabiwakis got his start in graphic arts as being an art director for a Forbes publication called American Heritage. He designed his first home theater for New York City mayoral candidate and heir to the S.D. Lauder companies, Juan Lauder. He then made it a career in 1990, and the rest is history. Have a look at some of his impressive designs, which build up to an impressive resume, backed up by an equally impressive clientele. One of the early theaters were for Eddie Murphy, when he was still living in New Jersey. Uh, we did the theater for Seth MacFarlane. It was the first private theater in California. I did a very nice uh, theater for uh, Dwayne Johnson, The Rock. Another project in, in Corona Del Mar, which was built to reflect the town that the client grew up in Illinois uh, in 1940 with um, a jewelry store where he, hid, he put all the jewelry uh, for his wife. So you would walk down the Main Street, Main Street USA 1942, and you experience items that kind of resonated his childhood. A shame that the rocks and set with Fallen's designs aren't featured in this, one of two books from Theo Kalibiwakis and Stephen Castle. But today, we're going to highlight three of 15 designs in here. This book takes you through the process of designing a home theater in the introduction, through conception, visualization, construction, and the finished product. The Moonlight, an architectural masterpiece for a best-selling author and his wife. That would be Dean and Gutter Kuntz. Dean Kuntz, as you know, is easily on a par with Stephen Kane, and he provides the foreword for this book. The Moonlight is a cheerful combination for Dean and Gutter Kuntz. Its dashly marquee and limestone facade at once recalling their childhoods and reflecting all they have overcome. So obviously all of the clients in here from notable figures like authors and former baseball stars and maybe one actor in here to uh, commoners but obviously all well-to-do people. A chorus line of Art Deco details stands throughout this elaborate production. From the bronze railings, to the movie posters, to the Michael Graves designed sconces on the facade. See these sconces? The Moonlight Theater. This is the two-page facade. You won't find these movie posters elsewhere. They were custom-created, commissioned for the Kunzes by illustrator Phil Fox in Art Deco styles to better reflect the time in which the films were made. I swear to you, if that capture wasn't there, I say that they were definitely original posters. From the box office to the lounge, no details were missed. None of the Barnes and Mika Capitals, the Weizen sculpture on the bar, or the mirror above for the Steco era car and cityscape. Take your top hat off to these movie posters. Fran and Ginger and Errol Flynn would be proud. There is plenty of conceptual art in here as well. And the photography here is equally resplendent in quality. Here's another two pages for you. Very Hollywood-esque. Very yesteryear-like. 
the layout of the theater was inspired by Frank Lloyd Wright's dignified Unity Temple. Theo Kalamiraki draws inspiration from plenty of historical and geographical sources. The next theater is the Ritz, a showcase for art and deco sophistication. This was commissioned by Martin and Janet Smith. Hollywood commoners and definitely well-to-do people. Through the exquisite doors is a gallery of Hollywood gods, from Judy Garland to Johnny Weissmuller, all life-size and lifelike. A Rene Lalique scone dating from the late 1920s Greek guests to the retro lounge and main foyer. The lounge exudes comfort, class, and sophistication in the spirit of Hollywood glamour of the past. You can almost hear eyes tinkling in the glass and dash tickling your ear. Mahogany columns frame a mix of antique art deco and contemporary furnishings, including an Osvaldo Borsani console from the early 1930s. Nancy causing armrest chairs and custom crafted contemporary lounge chairs. These two are definitely a well-to-do couple. I imagine how many movie nights they must hold at least a, in a month. The Monkey Bar mirror by Art Booth provides some color, whimsy, and a sense of pure innocence and fun, while the terrazzo floor retains deco styling. The owner's passion for art is also showcased in a collection of valuable pieces displayed in the powder room. The theater shows more of a flair for the dramatic, with its intricate backlit ceiling and column grills. The murals are outlined with gold to appear when the lights go down. It's one home theater, they blast the 20th Century Fox fanfare by the late, great Alfred Newman to sing on the start of the film. That is very Hollywood-esque, and also with a touch of class and modernism right over there. Surround speakers in the rear corners are concealed with cloth grills. They had to be positioned exactly so they wouldn't interfere with the theater's design. Much like background noise, outside and inside the stereo always interferes with my work. So, I don't think I can afford a home theater. But, Mother treats this house like a home theater because she blasts her big screen TV when she watches movies all the time. Whether on a DVD player, or on Netflix. Maybe we ought to call Theo and uh, upgrade that experience so I can move out of this house. Finally, we have the Rialto. Main Street, Southern California. Commissioned by Frank Wilson. A tinkerer and a builder and somebody who is quite an admirer of yesteryear. The inspiration for the theater comes from a hometown memory. The star of the terrazzo floor from Hollywood and the virtual light walls from coloring the glass from the rear. This entertainment complex is much more than the theater. It also houses the owner's classic car and jewelry collections. The jewelry store showcases pieces from the owner's family and features a vault door purchased from a local bank. The cafe brings a 50 style soda fountain into the cappuccino bar age with rich cherry tones. There's also a nod to deli-style celebrity walls. And a nod to Katz's delicatessen. The mirror above the banquet recalls the owner's upbringing in Charleston, West Virginia. Who painted that mirror? I want to know. Maybe William Carlos Williams has a mirror like that size that he did. And, oh! Vintage Food and Wine and Cosmo! Oh, that's not vintage. That has Katie Holmes on the cover. But still, it's vintage to me. To such anyone, the owner's daughters use the cafe to mix and sip milkshakes, just like the good old days. So we got a 50s admirer here, too. And it runs in a family. The Rialto. SoCal vibe from the 50s for the cosmopolitan undercurrent and modernism that is just... It's just really something special to look at once you get this. The theater follows the house rules for curves. Even the door handles are pleasingly bowed. The small lobby of the theater is unadorned, yet it casts an almost futuristic feel of being transported elsewhere. The men's and ladies' rooms feature elegant, 
Deco style sconces, mirrors, and fixtures. The attention to detail shows in the signage, the objective art, and the color schemes. The Oval Theater is based on Joseph Urban's design for the New School Auditorium in New York, which was built in the 1930s. Have a look at that design. The New School is a school for the arts in New York. The blue chairs, curves, and free-flowing grain of Japanese ass create a relaxing sensation in a dramatic space. Oh, if Robin Leach was still alive. This could easily be lifestyles of the rich and famous wordy material right here. The introduction compares the construction, the visualization, the conception, and the design of a home theater akin to that of a script in a film. The scene? A home theater, be it one that simmers in the fanciful designs or one that is modestly appointed with comfortable seating for family and friends. The players are an ensemble of audio and video equipment from the video projector or monitor to the loudspeakers and amplifiers to audio video processors and control systems that can even dim the lights on cue. The storyline is that the audio and video equipment must work together with perfect timing and grace to deliver the sights and sounds of a film just as the director intended them to be experienced. The action begins at a remote control, a button is pressed, and the lights dim. Retail price, 50 bucks US and $75 in Canada. We highlighted three of about 15 designs in here, and there are plenty more where I came from. From a South Beach design, to a South of France design. His other clients? Eddie Murphy, Roger Ebert, Damon Dash, Cut Silly, Randy Johnson, Chili Davis, the former baseball star mentioned, and others who prefer to remain anonymous. This visionary approach to the future of entertainment in the home is sort of inspire homeowners, architects, designers, and movie buffs alike. This has over 140 photographs. It was published by Abrams of New York, and it definitely inspired me. I just wish you included Roger Ebert's home theater in here. That would have given it an extra half a clap. But I think four and a half out of five claps will definitely uh, tempt you to pick this up. We bring Hollywood home on a budget. I mean, come on. What is not Hollywood about a movie theater at home? This is the second of two Theo Calabiraki's home theater design books, the first being private theaters, and maybe in there we'll find Roger Ebert's design or the locks or semifinals, and if not, there needs to be a third book. I'm definitely inspired, and I know Mother, with her big screen TV and her movie viewing habits, so God put us up in no time. Thanks for watching. That's the thrift store one down, and I will catch you on the flip side. The thrift store one down will return to Richmond October 8th for a very special occasion, of which I can't specify just yet. Let's just say that it's in good taste.